Hello and welcome to this crash course working with typography. There are seven type categories. There is the serif, sans serif, slab serif, script, decorative, old style, and modern. Let's break it down. First, we have the serif font. To identify it, it has foot-like edges that extend beyond the bottom or edge of the characters. Another way to identify it is that it has a vertical stress. So like here we have the O in the example below. It has a vertical stress. This font is great for print documents. Secondly, we have the sans serif font. It's another font to um, easily identify. It has no serifs whatsoever, no vertical stresses, no thick thin transitions of each character, and this font is great for the web. Next we have slab serif. To identify it, it has flat slab foot-like horizontal and thick edges. It has very little transition between the thick thin or contrast in the strokes. It has a vertical stress, just like the serif font, but think of it as a typewriter font. Next we have the scrimped font. It's easy to identify, it's one of the easiest. Think of it as like handwriting, and it's elegant. <clears throat> Next we have the decorative font. And decorative font is the most easiest font to identify. And it's anything real creative. So, for example, the font I used on my aunt's card, it's a needlepoint cross stitch font. That crafter and quilter example is a screenshot of that font. And um, she really liked it on her card. It really made her card um, stand out and it went with her uh, crafter and quilter theme. Just like with voltage clothing or milestone script, both are decorative fonts because the type is manipulated and it has um, either has added things like the lightning bolts or um, some manipulation to the type itself. Next we have old style. It has slanted serifs, diagonal stress in the strokes, and a moderate thick thin transition. Last but not least, we have the modern font. It has horizontal serif like the slab serif, but it has a drastic thick thin transition and vertical stresses. So like in that O, has a drastic thick thin transition. At the top you have thin, then it goes into thick and thin. Last but not least, when you're working with type, there's three things you should know. And those three things are letting, kerning, and tracking. Letting is the amount of vertical space between lines of type. In order to adjust your letting, kerning and tracking, you need some type of body text to manipulate. I don't have any. So I'm going to quickly show you how to get some real quick, just so you can follow along with this video. So I'm going to place a text box. And to fill this text box with placeholder text, you simply go to the type menu, and at the bottom, fill with placeholder text. Now I have some placeholder text. In order to change your letting, kerning, and your tracking, that's available under the character tool palette. Or you can simply select the text tool and your text box, and you can use the control bar at the top. That is an option too. But usually, um, I like to use the palette. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use the palette. Do you remember where it's located? It's located under the window option. 
under types and tables, select character. So here we are, we have our character palette. Let me zoom in here so you can see. So we have our character palette. Letting is located to the right of font size. So here we are, we have our letting, right? It's automatically set to 14.4 point. Well, what if I don't want that? What if I want to adjust it so that it's more scrunched up? Well, you can simply just use the arrow keys like so, or you can select a point size and select what you want. That's cool too, either works. I'm going to show you with the control panel at the top. Same deal. So here we have our tracking. It's located underneath font size here at the, in this panel. And again, you can either select auto where InDesign does it for you and that doesn't always work, doesn't always happen the way you want it. So sometimes you manually have to do this. So um, we just go ahead and select a number and adjust to your liking. So that is let Kerning is the process of adjusting the spacing between characters in a proportional font, usually to achieve a visually pleasing result. Kerning is the space between each character. So let me zoom in here so you can see my character palette. And in order to do kerning, you need your text tool selected, or you can press the keyboard shortcut T and enable the tool. Next, you need to place your cursor between um, a pair of letters here. And you can simply make it wider or more scrunched up. So I'm going to make it wider. So a positive number here makes it wider. And a negative number brings it closer. There we go. And to do that with the control panel, all you have to do is locate it here. It's at the top here. And do the same thing. So both panels work the same way, just like so. Last but not least, we have tracking. And tracking is the letter spacing. It refers to a consistent degree of increase, or maybe even a decrease, of space between the letters to affect density in a line or block of text. And this should not be confused with kerning. Tracking is used for a range of selected text. So it's used more for body paragraphs along with letting and kerning to um, get everything onto one page or maybe two pages, depending on what your document is for. So tracking helps you get rid of those widows and orphans and helps you increase readability and legibility. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. And I'll zoom out just a little bit more. There we go. And to adjust your tracking, you just simply go to your drop down menu or simply enter in a value. You can even enter in any value in any of these boxes. But um, for tracking, maybe you just want nothing, or maybe you want it closer together, so maybe you'll choose a negative number, or maybe you want it wider, because you have space to fill, and basically that's what tracking does. Now, if you were working with display type for kerning, maybe just for one or two words, then you would simply just go between your characters that you want to kern, and simply just adjust to where you you want it 
And with these three things, we have readability and legibility. These two things you have to have in mind when working with type. Readability refers to the way in which words and blocks of type are arranged on a page. Legibility refers to how a typeface is designed and how well one individual character can be distinguished from another. Well, that's all I have for you today. And as always, I'd like to thank you for viewing and see you next time.